But in recent years, fat intake has been reduced to that of the country as a whole, and carbohydrate intake has been liberalized. Thus, the rising triglyceride concentration of diabetics is associated with a trend towards decreasing dietary fat and increasing carbohydrate intake. So there we have the first group of researchers showing that hypertriglyceridemia is becoming more prevalent and it looks like that's more likely to be linked to heart disease. The next famous scientist was Peter Kuo from Philadelphia and he ran a clinic for treating patients with abnormal lipid values. And so most patients were sent to him for an investigation to determine whether they had familial hypercholesterolemia. But over the years, he realized that that wasn't the major problem, that the major problem was much more likely to be elevated triglyceride concentrations. And so here's his analysis of 286 patients. And familial hypercholesterolemia, which is the generally the lipid abnormality that most people worry about, was present in only 8%. However, hypertriglyceridemia, carbohydrate-induced, was present in the remainder, which was about 92% of patients. So he realized that the problem was much more likely to be carbohydrate-induced hypertriglyceridemia than genetic hypercholesterolemia. And so he wrote, although the majority of patients with atherosclerosis in this series were referred to us for the investigation of hypercholesterolemia, only 8.4% were found to have essential familial hypercholesterolemia. More than 90% were found to have carbohydrate-sensitive hypertriglyceridemia without, with or without hypercholesterolemia. Thus, it's reasonable to assume that with proper dietary preparation and appropriate laboratory studies, a high incidence of carbohydrate-sensitive hypertriglyceridemia could be demonstrated in persons with atherosclerosis. So he's confirming Albright and Mann's finding that hypertriglyceridemia appears to be the bigger problem. So he then went and did some experiments, and in this slide you can see the changes in serum, cholesterol, phospholipid, and triglyceride concentrations in one individual when in, on the left they ate the conventional home diet, which was low in fat and high in carbohydrate. And then after 12 months, for the next 20 months, they shifted to a no-sugar, low-carbohydrate diet, in which the carbohydrate was less than 150 grams. And notice that's quite a low-carbohydrate diet. And what you observe is that the triglyceride values fall down to normal levels. And interestingly, the cholesterol levels also fall. So he was able to show that you could reverse carbohydrate-sensitive hypertriglyceridemia by a low-carbohydrate diet. He then extended that and looked at 64 patients whom he followed for 16 months. So you can see that when people eat a carbohydrate-restricted diet, their blood triglyceride concentrations come dropping down and they stay down as long as the patients eat that diet. So he concluded since patients with carbohydrate-sensitive hypertriglyceridemia suffer primarily from disorders involving exaggerated biosynthesis of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, etc., carbohydrate restriction should constitute a feasible form of treatment. For practical purposes, it's necessary to eliminate all dietary sugar, sucrose, fructose, and lactose, on account of their high lipemic insulin-stimulating effects and low satiety value as compared with starches to lower carbohydrate consumption to about 500 calories per day. And he continued another significant finding of this investigation is the demonstration that sensitivity to simple carbohydrate is widespread amongst healthy and atherosclerotic populations. So he's identifying already that insulin resistance is prevalent in any population. In persons on an ad libitum American diet, lipogenic activities from simple carbohydrates appear to vary from low levels in young girls to very marked degrees in patients with atherosclerosis who are sensitive to carbohydrates with levels of apparently healthy males scattered in between. So again, showing this concept of insulin resistance which differs between different people. And he concludes, the role of this variable cellular response to carbohydrate in human atherosclerosis 
as reflected by a rise of very low density lipoprotein and serum triglyceride levels, deserves further and more intensive investigation. So this is said in 1967. And so you would think that surely people looked at triglycerides as a factor in heart disease. And the reality, it never happened. Instead, the focus shifted to cholesterol and the role of dietary fat in the causation of atherosclerosis. And that's one of the remarkable phenomena in modern some medical science, is that we had this body of evidence showing that triglycerides driven by carbohydrates and insulin were much higher in persons with heart disease or more likely to be elevated in persons with heart disease. And then it just shut off, just stopped. And instead, we started talking about cholesterol and low-fat, high-carbohydrate diets. And the question is why, and I think I'll try to answer that one. Cure then did some studies in which he wanted to see whether sugar was a component